Hello, my name is Dr. Dan Beckman at Methodist Hospital in Indiana. In this video, I will talk through the unilateral thoracoscopic microwave ablation procedure. Before the procedure begins, insert the endoscope into the FlexView cannula. An audible click should be heard when the endoscope is in the correct position. The FlexView cannula has two working channels through which tools can pass to the site of the surgery. One channel contains the suction tool and the other is used to advance the routing snare and retrieval tool during the procedure. The procedure requires two 12 millimeter ports and a 5 millimeter port to accommodate the FlexView cannula and routing of the Flex 10 ablation probe. Introduce the instruments for incising the pericardium. The incision should start two centimeters anterior to the phrenic nerve and extend superiorly towards the SVC until the aorta is exposed. The incision is then carried out inferiorly to just above the diaphragmatic fat pad. Endokitners may be used to facilitate dissection of the pericardial reflections at the SVC and IVC. The SVC and right superior pulmonary vein should now be utilized as landmarks to create a plane of dissection into the transverse pericardial sinus. Once the dissection is complete, the posterior aspect of the aorta and the left atrial appendage should be visible. The oblique pericardial sinus dissection around the IVC should be performed in a similar manner. Dissect through the pericardial reflection by gently teasing the tissue downward or in a posterior direction beneath the IVC. This is facilitated by gently elevating the right atrium and starting the dissection just inferior to the right inferior pulmonary vein. The inner pericardial surface on the patient's left side should be visible once the dissection is complete. Now introduce the flex view into the transverse sinus. Use the suction tool as necessary to provide a clearer field of view. Upon passing the flex view into the transverse pericardial sinus, the left atrial appendage will come into view. Once the flex view is in the correct position in the transverse pericardial sinus and posterior to the left atrial appendage, deploy the snare loop and advance the routing snare while simultaneously removing the flex view from the chest. Use the natural curvature of the routing snare to ensure that it points in an inferior and posterior direction. As the snare is advanced, the orange snare guide should be directly visible in the field of view.
Next, reinsert the flex view into the 12 millimeter port through the oblique sinus and locate the routing snare. If the routing snare cannot be visualized in the oblique sinus, it may be positioned anterior to the heart. The following method can be used to move the snare into the oblique sinus. Remove the flex view from the oblique sinus and advance it anterior to the heart. Point the tip of the flex view in an anterior direction towards the pericardium while navigating anterior to the heart. Once the snare is located, use the flex view to guide the snare around the apex of the heart. Provide slack to allow it to move posteriorly on the left side of the heart and into the oblique sinus. Reinsert the flex view into the oblique pericardial sinus and locate the routing snare. Advance the ball tip of the retrieval tool into the snare loop. Pull on the snare wire to tighten the loop around the ball tip and clamp the snare wire at its proximal end to ensure that the snare remains cinched. Withdraw the flex view from the oblique pericardial sinus, pulling the routing snare behind it. Avoid compression of the heart by feeding the proximal end of the routing snare into the chest while simultaneously withdrawing the flex view. Once the flex view is outside of the chest, detach the snare loop from the ball tip of the retrieval tool by releasing the clamp at the snare's proximal end. The routing snare should be positioned posterior to the left atrial appendage. Verify correct positioning by direct visualization with the flex view within the transverse and oblique pericardial sinuses. Attach the flex 10 to the routing snare by tying the suture to the snare loop with at least three knots. Draw the knots into the snare guide by pulling on the distal snare wire and clamping it. Feed the flex 10 into the transverse sinus while simultaneously pulling the routing snare out of the chest. The Flex 10 may require adjustments to ensure proper orientation. Inspect the flex 10 position and orientation through the transverse and oblique pericardial sinuses and verify that the probe is posterior to the left atrial appendage and properly oriented. It is critical that the probe is oriented correctly at the transverse pericardial sinus, oblique pericardial sinus, and left atrial appendage. After proper placement is verified, begin the ablation to create the box lesion and continue sequentially until the last segment, 
Additional lesions may also be created with the Flex 10.